Good morning. I'm pleased to welcome you to the Georgia Department of Economic Development Small Business Resource Webinar. I'm Lindsay Martin. I'm the Director of Entrepreneur and Small Business here at the department. We also have Catherine Green in the background running the show for us. Today, we are featuring resources available to minority-owned businesses here in Georgia. This morning, I'm happy to introduce Donna Ennis. Donna is the Director of Diversity, Engagement, and Program Development for the Enterprise, Inst Enterprise Innovation Institute at Georgia Tech. She is also the Project Director for the Minority Business Development Agency's Manufacturing Center and Business Center funded by the U.S. Commerce Department and also operated by Georgia Tech. And actually, as a sidebar, you know, I was the previous project director when the, the center was operated by the South Cab Business Inst uh, Incubator many, many years ago. So I actually passed the baton off to, to Donna back in the early uh, 2000s. Uh, Donna has invited three of her clients on the panel this morning, and I'll give her an opportunity to introduce them in just a minute. But just a couple of housekeeping notes uh, for the session. Uh, please enter any questions in the chat at the bottom of the screen, and we'll provide time at the end of the panel uh, for uh, panel discussion for Q&A. And also a recording of this webinar is being being done and it'll be available in the next day or two on our YouTube channel. So with that, uh, let me go ahead and toss it to Donna. Well, thank you so much, um, Lindsay. I am really excited to be here today to talk about the myriad of resources that are available to businesses, particularly to minority owned businesses or we call them MBEs. And I really thank the Georgia Department of Economic Development for giving us this opportunity. Um, before we get started with the panel, I wanted to really quickly give a, a very high level overview of the Minority Business Development Agency, uh, Agency and the network and business centers that are part of the network. So our mission is always to help grow and strengthen uh, MBEs, retain jobs, create jobs, and really have a uh, positive economic impact on our communities. Uh, MBDA is a, uh, the Minority Business Development Agency. It is an agency out of the Department of Commerce that has actually been around since the late 50s. Um, um, I'm sorry, the, the late 60s. We are part of a national network of about 40 centers, um, special projects, business centers, manufacturing centers, export centers. We have a federal procurement center um, in Washington, D.C., all working together. Uh, to again, grow and strengthen minority owned businesses. We um, are operated by uh, a number of different organizations. In the case here in Atlanta and in Georgia, Georgia Tech has held the um, contract, if you will, to operate two centers. Our business center was established in 2004, as Lindsay indicated, I met him when we first came on board. And then we worked with um, the MBDA to establish four manu advanced manufacturing centers in 2016 as a result of um, identifying a need to focus on minority-owned manufacturers. Um, other centers are operated by organizations, nonprofits, the National Minority Supply Development Council chapters, chambers of commerce um, operate these centers as well. So uh, we'll get to how all that ties together in terms of resources later in the conversation. How we help to grow and take companies to the next level, we have four pillars, access to markets and opportunities, um, capital, 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 access to capital, did I say capital? Uh, companies always need capital regardless of the, uh, their stage of growth. Um, infrastructure and capacity is, is, is an area that we see as a gap quite a bit with companies, large and small, um, just really um, growing and strengthening your internal processes and back office. And finally, what we're really here to focus on today is the resources and expertise, which is a really strong uh, pillar for not only our centers, but for a lot of the organizations that operate uh, what we call entrepreneurial service organizations. And just really quickly, we have programs. I'm not gonna go through the programs and we have services. And the, uh, the, the part of the services that really speak to resources is under capacity building and how we 
really connect our companies to not only what we do, but what a, a lot of our partners and stakeholders provide as well. Um, this has just been our economic impact in the past five years. Uh, we've served over 3,000 MBEs um, and helped secure over $6.4 billion in contracts and financing and close to 6,000 jobs. And that's for our Atlanta Center. The, um, the entire network is in the trillions of dollars when it comes to um, the economic impact that we have on the company, on the country. So I'm gonna stop here for a minute before I introduce the panel. So this looks like a slide with a lot of logos and it is a slide with a lot of logos, but each of those logos represent an organization that has um, um, you know, a, a strength behind it in terms of, or what we say a bench behind it in terms of a network behind it in terms of being able to offer resources and services and programs and things of that nature. So for example, at Georgia Tech, we're part of the um, Enterprise Innovation Institute. Not only do we have the MBDA centers, but we have the Advanced Technology Development Center. We have the Georgia um, uh, uh, Manufacturing Extension Partnership Program. We have a number of um, um, Economic Development Administrative or EDA programs. We also have our Trade Adjustment Assistance Center and other things that we're doing to help grow businesses. Um, we work with Morehouse College over here. They have their, um, they have their uh, Entrepreneur Center, Innovation Entrepreneurship Center. They do the, uh, they offer the Ascend 2020 program. Um, I have up in the corner SBA and, you know, SBA has a number of programs that we'll talk about later. So I just wanted to stop here to show that you as a business have, you have access to um, just a vast network of partners and stakeholders and organizations all really working on behalf of, of you to help you grow your business. We want you to be successful. So with that, I am going to move on to the panel because that's what we're here to do today. We are here to, um, to discuss resources and strengthening your business and taking it to the next level. I have with me today, Barbara Jones. I, I picked three of our clients at different stages of growth in their businesses and different types of businesses. So we have Barbara Jones, who is the founder and CEO of Lily R&B. Uh, her company is an IT technology firm. I have Janelle Darden, founder and CEO of Moisture Love and of Beauty Formulator. She is a, her company is a manufacturer. And then I have Ken Towton, who is president and CEO of the Royster Group. And his company is a professional services company, executive search firm, focused on the healthcare industry. So with that, I am going to open it up and start with Barbara and have her introduce herself. Thank you so much, Donna. Hello, everyone. I'm Barbara Jones, founder, CEO of Lilly R&B Inc. And as Donna said, we, I have an IT consulting firm, which has uh, pivoted this year we're now an enterprise solutions company. We not only do consulting, but we have a product that we now offer to retailers starting out in the retail technology sector that's solving an over $400 billion issue for retailers. And just very excited to be developing our own product as well as uh, the consulting services we've been offering for the last, looks like eight years now. Great. Janelle, you're on mute. Um, hi, everybody. So my name is Janelle Darden, and I'm the owner and creator of Moisture Love, which is a beauty platform that helps women transform their curls as well as their heart so they can confidently embrace their beauty. Additionally, I have a manufacturing company called um, Beauty Manufacturing, where I do private label and custom formulations for individual brands or entities who would like to have a product in the marketplace. So thankful to be here and um, to be on this panel. Awesome. Ken? There we go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ken Taunton. Um, I'm the president and CEO of the Royster Group. Um, we're an executive search and professional staffing firm headquartered here in Atlanta, uh, specifically um, specializing in uh, recruitment in healthcare. Well, so we recruit physicians, nurses, ancillary staff. Um, a lot of our clients, um, uh, most of our clients are all federal, uh, DOD, uh, Defense Health Agency, and what have you. And um, we work in 15 different states. And so we've been with uh, working with the center uh, for a little over 19 years now. 
So glad to be here this morning. Awesome. All right, so let's start with the first question. Um, so what types of resources are you using? Uh, Janelle, let's start with you. What types of resources are you using? And, and actually, how did you come to join the MBBA centers? Oh, um, so Donna and I met from another program I was in um, called Start Me. And when she introduced herself and said what she did, I was like, I need that support um, for manufacturing specifically. So um, over the last, it's been a couple of years now, I think, um, over the last couple of years, Donna has invited me to different programs and, and workshops and conferences that provided the resources that I need. I actually was able to um, speak to a major um, hospital client to have my products um, put into their hospitals. It's still an ongoing process, but would have not have come about if it were not for Donna introducing me to them at that conference. Um, and more recently, I had an ask around helping build out my capacity planning. So as you saw, Donna said on the last slide, uh, within my manufacturing warehouse setup, it was like, I need to be able to make a little bit more product more efficiently. So she's connected me with the team that's helping me think through the types of tanks that I need to buy, the pumps that we need, the flow, um, and how we can increase our throughput on the line so we can then get more business. So um, it's been an ongoing relationship that continues to morph. And now that I saw some of the other slides that you presented today, I'm like, okay, so I need a couple of those things too, Donna. That's right, um, that's right. <laughs> but it's been, it's been good. It's kind of like whenever I, when I complete a step, then it's like, you know, we're here for the next step. Now you're a Georgia Tech alum. And so yeah. you, have you been able to use some of the resources at Georgia Tech as well? So we have actually currently with this capacity planning, they, um, I sent my products in and they did some viscosity testing and some other kind of high tech machinery testing that I would not have had access to or would have had to pay a lot of money for um, through Georgia Tech. Um, we worked, I think when we first started, Donna, we were working with the um, SBDA a lot mm -hmm. to figure out mm -hmm. how to increase domestic um, and see where there's opportunity for international. So it's been, I feel like I've touched quite a few different departments. Um, and now it's kind of like the whole pie is coming together as we get our capacity together. So then I'll really be able to go after some of the sales contracts that we haven't been able to fully be able to bring on with confidence without knowing that our capacity is in place. Awesome. Ken, how about you? Yeah, so um, the, the Versa Group, um, we're, we're um, even though we're executive search and medical staffing firm, um, we're considered actually a government contractor. And so um, we um, have been using the centers or utilizing the center uh, in various different ways, um, given the fact that, you know, all of our uh, revenue comes from government, um, there is a really extensive um process when we're working with in, that, in, the, in, the, in the government space, which consists of requests for proposals. So uh, the, uh, the center has, and Donna, you, you guys have worked with us with um, RFP processes. Um, you guys have worked with us in terms of shredding you know, solicitations, whether uh, we bid, uh, if it's a go or no-go bid. Um, <clears throat> most recently, uh, Royster was awarded a contract with the Wal uh, Walter Reed uh, in DC, um, staffing anesthesiology services. And uh, Donna was, uh, uh, the center was, uh, helped us with that process in terms of looking over the proposal, but then also uh, with the press release as well. And so, and then also you guys have helped us, uh, helped us uh, Royster with, uh, you know, banking um, in terms of putting our banking packet together. Um, I know early on and, um, you know, back when we first started, when we were in the embryonic stage of, <laughs> of the process, you know, uh, I, quite honestly, I, I didn't know how to, to put a packet together to go get a line of credit and what have you. And so I utilized the center uh, to help us with that. And so when you're going to a bank and trying to get, um, you know, uh, uh, lines of credits, uh, there, there's a lot of questions that need to be um, answered. And so Donna helped us through that process. So we've utilized um, the, the center as an extension of a division of the Royster Group. Even though we're considered um, a small business, um, we're sort of kind of in that mid tier, but, you know, but the center has definitely been a division of Royster. All right, and Barbara? 
Thank you so much, Donna. Uh, I'm a new client. I just signed up with the MBDA last year, and it's been a whirlwind since I, I joined or I was accepted as a client. I met Donna through Morehouse. I'm an entrepreneur in residence there and was part of their Ascend 2020 program. And part of being in that program, we got introduced to Donna and she hit the ground running. I think I've been, um, I, I got accepted to the ICCC program and was able to talk with Bank of America. Uh, Donna, I don't know if I told you that part, but we talked with Bank of America mm -hmm. and we also got uh, assigned a um, accountant who was helping us understand how to use QuickBooks and my assistant because we were having some trouble just you know putting things in the right buckets. So he worked with us and trained us on QuickBooks. Um, also through the MBDA program when uh, COVID hit, we learned about the CARES Act and to apply for the different types of loans and ended up getting um, over six figures from the CARES Act through the EIDL and the PPP loan program. We also learned about the Cobb County Grants program, was able to get funding from there. And then, um, you know, as we started building our product, we were um, accepted as a finalist for a, a really big $2 million pitch competition. And of course, I called Donna to get some help with my pitch and make sure it was on point before we <laughs> pitching at that competition. And that led to, you know, just so many great things for us, which is funding and uh, our first investors came on this year. And so I've been looking, I looked at her slide. I think I've used most of the things on there, SBDC, ATDC. Uh, we've been working with PTAC because we're trying to get into government contracting. So I saw a lot of those logos and I've been taking advantage of all those services. And it's been great being able to just reach out to Don if you have questions about anything. And uh, I know the next thing we're looking at is probably an SBA loan. And Don has mm -hmm. already connected me with someone there to help us when we're ready to apply. So it's been great uh, just since joining last year. Thank you. And one of the things I want to convey to the audience is that, you know, I do have a team behind me. So I know they say Donna, Donna, but it's usually they call me and then I call the team members. Uh, so I want to thank, you know, my team, Sky Capital, Praxis, Anita Bass Baker, uh, I'm Anita Baker, Anita Davis, Jennifer Passy, uh, Brandy Nagel, Lauren Roberts, um, Creative Mischief. We just have a, I just have a team of folks, um, Anthony Jackson, who helps on the manufacturing side. And we've also partnered with the Georgia Tech Manufacturing Institute to help us bring solutions to our manufacturers. So um, I'm their account manager. That's why they call my name all the time. But other, other team members also have accounts that they're working with as well. So um, let's, let's have a discussion about how you use resources. And I know you've mentioned some specific ones, but as the owner of a company, you know, what do you think about when you're thinking about uh, using resources? And can let's start with you because you did make a comment on our conversation the other day about the difference between growing your business and taking it to the next level. And you kind of wanted to make that distinction as well. So let's start with you, with the types of resources you use, even outside of MBDA, it doesn't have to just be us. Right, yeah, so, so the, the resources that we, uh, you know, I, I, so I, 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 I've seen my business sort of kind of, like I said, go from this embryonic stage to, um, you know, now we're, we're in this kind of mid stage and so, um, you know, when we first started out, um, we were just basically looking at the basics in terms of, you know, trying to figure out what our NATE's code is and size standards and, um, you know, um, how could the, uh, how, how would, you know, the Small Business Administration be able to assist us, um, you know, when it comes to mentoring and things of that nature. And so, so um, you know, when, we, when, you, when the, the center first started helping Royster, um, you guys helped us with our um, 8A certification and, and things of that nature. So that was our initial stage. And so we were in that program for about nine years and, so, and did relatively well, um, you know, with the help of the SBA, um, you know, MBDA, um, a lot of different uh, mentorships that we were part of. And then as we, when we graduated, then that's when the sort of kind of the, <laughs> that, that's when the real work started happening, meaning that, <laughs> Um, you know, we were too small to compete in the um, in sort of kind of in the small business realm, but we were what well, well, I should say too big to compete in the small uh, business world, but then too small to compete with the, the the bigger companies. And so we were sort of kind of in this gray space, meaning that you know we you know we really did have to try to figure out 
um, you know, the resources that we could use um, from Donna's, uh, from, from the MBDA perspective. So, and what I mean by that is that, you know, um, we didn't have a, a, a huge team. Um, you know, we didn't have a, a huge capacity of people that, you know, that track proposals or, or mm -hmm. looked at opportunities and, and, and would, could fly to these different agencies to, to do a lot of business development. And so, uh, the MBDA um, basically kind of gave us a lot of different platforms that we could use, like, you know, SAM.gov, um, looking mm -hmm. at, you know, solicitations. And so, and then also the other resources like, you know, BidPrime, BidNet, and, and, and all of these different platforms where we could utilize these different tools uh, that, that we could take a look at, you know, different uh, RFPs and solicitations and things of that nature. Yeah, on the federal level, the state level, and then even also on the county level. And so the center was able to kind of give us those resources so that, you know, we, we given the fact that we didn't have a, have a whole lot of resources to spend on business development, but we could really mm -hmm. utilize our resources in house. And so it just gave us that, that, that little bit of a flexibility, <clears throat> but then also those resources that we could use so that we, we're not, we weren't um, spending a whole lot of money. So that allowed us to get from that whole 8A stage to this mid stage. And now, you know, hopefully we're, we're gonna grow to this bigger stage. All so right. that's what we're excited about, so. So Janelle, why don't you pitch in with what other kinds of resources are you using and um, how do you think about, um, you know, being strategic about what's out there? Because one of the things I do want to convey to the group, to the audience is how you strate strategically look at resourcing um, for what you need so that you're not um, um, just out there grabbing, you know, uh, resources that may not be beneficial for you. Yeah, so so for me, I think I'm in a little bit of a different stage than the other panelists. I'm really still trying to grow my the foundation of myself. Um, so um, we had talked about some funding opportunities and it looks like I wasn't ready for them yet just because my sales weren't at the right place. So then it was like, okay, what are some factors that affect me from being able to get larger contracts? And then the first thing came up capacity, making sure that I have the right systems in place um, to be able to serve those contracts when they come. Because I don't want to be that business owner that overpromised and underdelivered and said you get it in six weeks and it takes 12 weeks because that kills your business immediately. So right now, strategically, our focus is by over the next 60 days to, 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 to flush out this capacity planning systems and hiring people. And then from there, um, then I'll be tapping back into Donna to be like, okay, of all these services, where can we look at getting some more contracts? So um, mm -hmm. I have gotten women on certified. Next is to get minority on, minority on certified. Um, I think we talked about if 8A makes sense for me and I'm not sure, we, we may need to revisit that. But looking at, okay, now that we have these certifications, how can I find some contracts to lift the sale so then I can go back and lift the ability to, to get funding. So that's kind of how I've mapped it out in my mind for my <laughs> All right, and Barbara, how about you? Um, I think for me, I, I use resources to kind of augment, um, you know, what I already have on my team. I do have a, a, you know, a lot of, it's a technical company. So most of the people that work for me are, you know, computer programmers or coders, things like that. What I mm -hmm. lack is sales and marketing and accounting and all the, you know, I'm kind of doing all that stuff. I have a few people on the team to help, but mostly everybody's programming and consulting and building software but there's so much more that the business needs. And so that's what I've been using um, all these different services for really to augment me until I'm ready to start hiring people into the company in, the, in these type of roles. So, you know, accounting, sales and marketing, uh, looking at, you know, uh, marketing collateral, so, you know, some different things like that is what I've been using the resources for is that just a kind of like a staff augmentation for what I don't have on my team currently. Um, Donna is how I would answer that. Mm -hmm. So, so, one of the things we always hear, everybody wants more sales, everybody wants more opportunities. And so that's one pillar that we focus on. Of course, the capital is always a need. Um, can you guys speak a little bit more to building your company internally? And because um, everybody always says, you know, I need more sales, I need more opportunities. We were business people, you want to grow your business. But, you know, we find that that is oftentimes the challenge that a lot of our small businesses have. You may be at 
three million, but operating as though you're five hundred thousand, or you may mm -hmm. be a ten million operating as though you're a million dollar business. So, how do you, as a business owner, uh, you know, shift from that working in the business to the on the business and making some investments in the business as mm -hmm. opposed to chasing? Um, the opportunities to, that you have to do all the time. So I'll just, anybody jump in? I know we're doing this virtually, but I'm, I don't want to call on you like you're in the classroom. So <laughs> just jump on in and just step. <laughs> um, Donna, I'll take that um, question first. I think for, for me, um, that, that whole hiring people is, you know, it's a little scary to, you know, to hire someone as a full-time employee and then provide benefits and all this type of stuff. It's a little scary um, you know, as a startup business. So I think that's something that I, you know, I tried to do contractors initially and was a little nervous about hiring people until we um, started using an outside um, HR firm. I think right now we have paychecks. And so they handle all of the HR and payroll. So that makes me feel a little bit better that I'm following all the right rules and taxes are being paid. So that helped mm -hmm. with that. And then the same thing on the financial side is, you know, keeping up with QuickBooks is, you know, it's, I just hate it. So it's, I have to look in there, yeah, way less than I should. And so hiring an outside CFO to come in and make sure the books are kept up and taxes are filed, and everything is accounted for. And so, um, you know, that's why, like I said, these services are so important is because um, as a small business, um, for us, you know, hiring people, even the recruiting side is like being able to find people and hire them is just so mm -hmm. time consuming. It's like, you know, I don't have time to do that. So we have to have someone outside do the recruiting for us. And so that's mm -hmm. what I use these services really to augment, you know, myself and my team so that we can focus on what we do well, which is the technology part of the business. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I could go next. I, I think it's um, as a, as a business owner, I mean, it's, it's tough um, it, as we all know. And, and, and I can tell you that, um, you know, when, when I, when, when you, when we all go into business, we, we like the, the technician side of it. We enjoy doing what we like doing. I love recruiting. I, I love the recruiting process. I love talking to people, but when you look at the operation side of the house, that takes up 90% of your time, right? And so that's the piece where, you know, as a business owner, you have to put most of your time in. And so um, Donna, when you mentioned about working on and in your business, I, I can tell you that um, I wish I had have done it early on in terms of working in the business because I was all about driving revenue, drive, drive, mm -hmm. drive revenue, right? And, and when you drive the revenue, that's great. But when you flip that revenue over the fence, meaning that you, you bring it back in house and you, you know, uh, dissect it to your team, whether it be, you know, recruiting or, or, or uh, you know, the QuickBooks side of it, the financial side of it, uh, that's a big piece that needs to, you know, that you have to have control over. And so, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and I'll be quite honest with you, I didn't. Um, there were some times when we, we had we had some pitfalls. And so um, and now the way I see it is that if you, if you don't have a strong team, um, regardless of the, 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 the revenue that you bring in or that you drive, um, you're, you're not going to be able to manage it. And so one of the things that we've done, I, I can tell you, is that we live and breathe our core values now. I mean, core, customer service, integrity, teamwork, accountability and respect. That drives everything that we do now, everything. And so if, 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 those, if those five core values doesn't hit certain pieces of our business, then, you know, it, it will, it, we, we probably will not make a good decision and mm -hmm. we, will not, we probably will make a, 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 a great decision. So it dry, it, that, those core values drive everything now, which helps us from an internal perspective you know, from the hiring, from, from our vendors, you know, from uh, working with our clients. So, so, um, so I think that is important, you know, and to, 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 to concentrate on the business um, internally, but then also have partners like MBDA that you can go to so that you're not scrambling and, try, and mm -hmm. trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to recreate, you know, something that's already been done. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Janelle, did you want to add something or? Yeah, I mean, my my input would be very similar to what both of Barbara and Ken said. Um, I, I look at MBDA and all of the different services as my consulting groups, right? Um, I used to consult professionally myself and um, 
I've always wanted to be able to have that level of service, but as a small business, it's very difficult to afford it. Um, but what the NBEDA and all the other partners bring is those expertise levels um, to the table that help me quickly move from here to there instead of me trying to figure it out myself. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's very easy as an entrepreneur to be like, hey, I'm smart. I've done this before. I've done this for other companies. You know, I used to get paid to do this. Surely I could do it myself. But it's kind of like the cobbler's kid have no shoes. Um, <laughs> and now that I have gotten really clear on that, it's like, let me pass this off um, to, to the pros because they can see it from a different lens, one. And then two, definitely building a team. Yeah. I have labored and put off on building a team for so long because I told myself I didn't need it. I couldn't afford all these things. Um, and so now I am full force um, into building a team. And I've gotten really creative with finding people, a mixture of temps, a mixture of virtual assistants, and, and then a mixture of people in person to, to get what I need. Yeah, it's in, in these times, you have to be creative with how you build your business. And it gets to a point where, you know, people say I can't afford to, but it does get to a point where you, can af you cannot afford not to. And right. so it's costing you more when you're spending your time um, doing QuickBooks when that, you know, that's a pretty expensive amount of time, you know what I mean? So you have to make those kind of decisions. So, so let's kind of look forward now. We, you know, we're coming through COVID and um, we'll talk, I'll have you share how you managed all of that. Um, and as we come through it and we're moving forward, whatever this new normal is gonna be, I think everybody's still trying to figure it out. What are some of the challenges and, and that you're seeing down the road for your company that you're looking at, you know, solving now with through the use of, um, of our, all kinds of resources. I'll start there. Um, I've seen two key challenges as we come through COVID. Um, one definitely around employees and employing employment. Um, so many people have shifted the way they view work. Um, so many people have decided they're gonna live off all the grants and government funding and, and unemployment for as long as they can. Um, so we have really been thinking about creative ways to incentivize people to want to work um, mm -hmm. and to show up and to wanna to be a part of the team. So we're building out um, profit sharing and profit incentives and just other things to help them view it as more, more than a paycheck, but a potential way to um, build long-term wealth. And I think as the dust settles and people are kind of figuring out what they want to do, we're trying to figure out how to get in their face, you know, how to be one of the frontline people as part of the conversation. Um, the second thing, I learned a really hard lesson about sales and marketing through COVID. Um, so pre-COVID, we had a strong wholesale business and also a relatively strong online business. During COVID, online exploded. And we just thought, oh my goodness, like, this is great. Now in this last few months, as the dust is settling, it's kind of like, it's settling. Um, so realizing that I need to have a very strong omni-channel presence um, and that no one bucket of sales needs to be heavier than the other, mm -hmm. but at least, you know, a, well, a nice even spread so that if one dips, the other one can at least hold steady and really thinking through how to do that in an online world but where there's still some mixture of people wanting to purchase hands-on and in-person. So that's a lot of what we're thinking through wow. and what we're fortifying so we don't have, you know, we don't run up against again. Yeah, we hear workforce, workforce, workforce. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really a challenge. And I think um, this is really a, a time to be creative. I'm intrigued by the profit sharing and that you would even have that as part of your plan to think about because we're, you know, we're all looking at how we can um, build more wealth and help our community build more wealth. Mm -hmm. And so that is, with our small businesses, that is a way to do that. How, Barbara, what are your thoughts in terms of challenges and how you're looking at it and, and resources for the future of the company? Yeah, I, I agree a, a lot with what Janelle said. Um, even on the technology side, um, we're competing with Googles and Amazons and everybody's starting to open up to where um, you know, they're hiring remote workers. And so they're, you know, they're competing with uh, developers here in Georgia that we're trying to get as well. And so, you know, for us, it's, we've had to open up, um, you know, the ability to hire people from anywhere. 
Uh, mm. They don't have to be here in Georgia. We're having to to you know uh, put remote in the in the hiring description because people you know some people don't want to come back to the office. Um, and so uh, being able to say that you can work remotely uh, has gotten us you know a few more people in the door <laughs> as far as our recruiting efforts. Uh, we've also looked into um, not really profit sharing but stock options. You know I had never. Um, had stock options in the company, but now we see that as a way to help with the recruiting is to give people, um, you know, equity, uh, a chance mm-hmm. to earn equity in the company since we're a startup and uh, a tech startup that's starting to get funding and different things like that. Uh, people want to take, you know, be part of that. If the company does well, they want to be able to own some equity in the company. So recruiting is big. Um, for us, sales and marketing has become, you know, one thing I never really even did that. It was all word of mouth before. And now, we are allocating, you know, money towards marketing, which is new to me. I've never really spent money on that. I did it all. And now we actually have a company that's doing all of our marketing. So we're doing all kinds of social media and just seeing some of the ideas that they're coming up with is like, wow, why you should trust your team. There's a lot of things I don't know. And I'm mm-hmm. learning all kinds of stuff about how do you market the company? How do you get us out in front of different people? Um, and so the resources, you know, we used SDBC as well, been able to talk with people there who have kind of helped us look at our website and make sure that it's ready for this new mm-hmm. enterprise solutions that we're now offering. So just, you know, just so many resources here in, uh, in Atlanta that we're able to take advantage of. We just try to, to, you know, I definitely look for those resources to just augment the team and, and help with some of the, the new things that I don't know how to do. Uh, I want to get that expert advice from people who do know how to do it and start spending money on other things besides just development start spending Mm -hmm. money on the, you know, the sales, the marketing and different things like that. That's interesting too. And, and, and can I get to you in a minute? Cause marketing and um, uh, processes are the two gaps that we see all the time in companies is, you know, and no matter whether it's manufacturing, we've even done our Georgia manufacturing survey that we do every two years, marketing always rises up as a challenge and when you know sometimes when I just go and look at the company's websites I'm like oh my goodness you know really so yeah. and now yeah. in the age of social media and all that kind of stuff it's, it's really it's really important to know what works for you because social media doesn't necessarily drive sales mm-hmm. but it may be used for something else that will mm-hmm. drive sales and drive uh, revenue at some point. So Ken, how about you? I mean you, I know you, you you've got uh, you're working on some big things and growing and so what are some of the challenges through COVID that you've been able to harness and some of the resources you're seeing that you're going to be using? Yeah, so I, I could tell you that for us, um, you know, uh, knock on wood, it was a blessing that, um, you know, our, um, you know, the, our clients continue to pay us, uh, you know, given the fact that we're in the government space and specifically in healthcare, um, you know, a lot of our providers were frontline, right? And so we were considered consider essential services. So, um, you know, so our people, you know, they, they kept going to, going to, to the clinics and, and doing certain things and, uh, you know, trying to manage COVID the best way that they could. And so that was a scary process uh, a bit for me. I can tell you that one of the biggest challenges that um, has occurred with us is uh, is our insurances. <laughs> our insurances has just completely gone through the roof, and and as a small business, um, you know, you you, you uh, they don't they don't uh, you know insurances doesn't have a size standard. You know, if you're big, you're gonna pay. If you're small, you're gonna pay. And so so we're having to really kind of look look at how. Um, you know, we're going to, you know, actually pay for that. And so that means that, you know, um, as we bid on opportunities and contracts, you know, those, those, um, you know, those, those, those rates are going to increase. And so that's, that's one of the challenges that, that, that we're going to, you know, that that's going to be taking place. And I don't think that's going to change uh, for long term. As we all know, once insurances get to a certain point of their pay, they're going to stay, you know, um, I can tell you that we've been a, we're having to invest in IT quite a bit and to Barb's and Janelle's point, you know, we're having to be a bit flexible with our internal staff, right? And so a lot of, you know, people aren't wanting to come back into the office. Um, they're, they're, they want to work remote and, <clears throat> and by working remote, you got to have, you know, you got to have good cyber security, right? And mm-hmm. so we're having to put a lot of resources 
um, around our cyber, our IT and all of that stuff. And that's a big cost. And so that's a challenge too. And then also just being able, to, just having a flexible um, work environment, you know, um, that, that's, I, I think that's, um, that's here to stay. Um, I can tell you, giving you an example, we um, interviewed um, quite a few recruiters and all of them, actually all of them had about two or three offers um, you know, uh, uh, that in hand that they could work remote, right? And I'm thinking, okay, I, you got to come into the office. Well, you know, if, if, if I want to hire people, <laughs> I got to be a bit more flexible. So yeah. right now we're having to, to, to shift our paradigm to this whole flexible uh, work schedule and, and, and understanding that, you know, we're going to have to create a team remotely. What does that look like? How do we do that? And that's going to be a challenge too, because as we all know, you get your great ideas, you know, with, with people being, you know, by the water cooler, right. Or just hopping, you know, down the office to another person uh, on your team. But um, so those are some challenges that we're going to, that we're going to be looking at um, as we move forward. And I think that that is, um, that's, that, that's, those are great points about the flexible environment. I know in Janelle's case, you have people that have to come in and work the line. So you know, but still there may be some flexibility that you have to consider in terms of their scheduling and, you know, how they get to work and when they come to work and those kinds of things. I do think that while this virtual environment is, is great, and I think it has actually disproved, disproved a lot of myths about people not being productive at home, but at the same time, you know, you guys are going to have to put in uh, management structures that mm -hmm that that are conducive to this flexible environment. And I think that that's gonna be um, a, a new territory, a new frontier for everybody is to how do you, you know, put your team together and manage them um, in this flexible environment. So, so, um, so what other kinds of tips do you have for our companies out there in general related to what they should be thinking about um, and, and one other thing I want to cover before we go to Q&A, because I know we could probably, you know, we could talk another 30, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. it, but technology. So our platform at the MBBA centers um, is technology enabled, technology owned. So we really believe that, um, you know, to scale, you own your own technology scale, or you enable the company through technology. And I think that as we see, um, and Janelle, you kind of spoke to that about moving online and then, you know, managing the different platforms. And of course, Barbara, you're, you're a technologist, so you know that. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things you, you want, advice you want to give about uh, for, for the companies on the line about using technology or enabling their company through technology? Well, I'll start off, um, Donna, just based on what Ken said about uh, these remote workforces and allowing people to work from home. And, you know, uh, people, some people are productive, some aren't. So, yeah. <laughs> so you have to put, you have to put things in place. And for us, what we did is we tried to make it feel as though we were all still in the office. So we have a Slack, we have, we set up Slack, we set up a uh, Zoom, we set up a uh, Microsoft Teams so that people can still, still work together. They basically get online and they can see each other. They still have their meetings where they can see each other. They can even take, take over each other's screens if they need to do some peer coding. So they, I mean, I watched some of the chats going on in Slack and they're talking just like they're at work. It's jokes going on and they're, you know, here's a favorite song, everybody listen to this. And so they built this online community to where they're all still working together. If someone's struggling with something, everybody jumps in and helps out or gives them tips to use. Um, so we've really started using technology to kind of keep the team together and to keep us feeling like we still have those water cooler moments by having Slack already set, always set up and everybody's in there communicating with each other like they normally do. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, for us is it's just, you know, what I had to do um, that really helped me out is I started to um, not feel like, I guess I was kind of like a control freak in the first. It's like, I just wanted to have my hands on everything. Cause I didn't really, you know, I felt like if, if I let somebody else do it, it's going to mess up or they're gonna, not going to do it the right way and everything's going to fall apart. So that's kind of was my thinking uh, in the beginning of the company. And it just made me the bottleneck. And so everything was going through me. And then I was working 80 hours a week and, and just killing myself. 
And so what I've learned uh, lately is trust the team. And this is why I tell everybody else starting out there is if, if you are paying people and you're hiring people, trust your team. And I started, you know, delegating here. You go do this, you do this. I need to concentrate on one or two things. And that's really it. Everything else, like Donna was saying, it's no reason for me to be in QuickBooks trying to figure out how to put these things in buckets. There are people who love that. Let them go do it. So I started trusting my team, started delegating. And when that happened, the company started growing mm -hmm. because I had time to focus on the things that I do very well, which, which was the sales and talking with retailers and getting new customers. I could focus on that and let my team do all those other pieces and we started growing. So trust the team is one thing I would, I would give to a uh, founder, especially at the early stage, you can't do it all. Just the, the earlier you know that and start putting processes in place and trust your team and delegate, you will see that it'll really help your company grow. Okay, I think I need to stop here because I know we're running down on time and bring Lindsay in. I know you've got a number of questions. This is great conversation. And sometimes when we have these one hour panels, I'm like, maybe we should make it an hour and 15 minutes. But then if we get an hour and 15 minutes, maybe we should do an hour and a half. So, so let's kind of stop right here and um, bring Lindsay back in for the Q&A part. Absolutely, folks, thanks so much for your participation. It's a great discussion. And Donna, I, I, I see that you have continued with a mantra that I used to have when I was project director was always telling people to work on their business rather than in their business. Because exactly. you, if you work in your business, you will always be in the business. But if you work on your business, you will have something that you can leave to, to the next generation. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. We got a, a few questions here. Uh, first, Donna, this one is directed at you. Um, what, uh, you see, with MBDA, and I, I already know the answer to this question, but we had a question here from the audience about uh, uh, minorities and who qualifies for uh, the use of these services and, and how do you determine that? Yeah, so there, the federal um, definition is, is basically people of color. So his, Hispanic, African-American, um, Asian-American, Pacific Islanders, um, um, uh, what else am I missing? Um, Native, Native American. Americans, Native Americans. So, you know, people of color. So you, I don't know the actual statute, but you can always look that up on the, up, up on the um, internet. Okay. And then secondly, there was a question from an 8A firm. You know, they wanted to know specifically what can MBDA do to assist an, a, an 8A firm that is already certified. So I get that question a lot. What can you do for me? And um, we have a, a different approach at our centers and it's like, what do you need? And yeah. then we try to find, I think um, my cl our clients here can attest to that, that they typically come to us with the need and then we find it. So my question would be, what is it that you need? Um, if you're new in the space, you definitely want to talk to Ken because he knows how to navigate it. He's been there, done that. Um, but you definitely need to have a strategy um, for how you're going to get business and um, you know, we can talk, we can talk later. So just reach out on it. And I think we have an interest form on the internet or my, my email is donna.ennis at innovate.gatech.edu. We also have a, um, the Georgia Tech um, Procurement Assistance Center, which is our PTAC. And they, they do a, a, a they, you, no, no cost services. There are PTACs all over the country and they can help you navigate that process as well. And the last question to you, Donald, uh, there was a, I guess on your graphic showed um, MBDA centers in other states, uh, specifically the one in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, the uh, person wanted to know what's the difference in their function from the one here in Atlanta. And also uh, is the Atlanta center, uh, does it function statewide or does it, is it limited to just Metro Atlanta? So, um the, we don't have the one in North Carolina anymore, but the recent um, RFP that came out added North Carolina back in. So, um, and in fact, I need to update that slide because they added in probably eight more states. Um, we, we, we um, as centers, we can work anywhere in the country. Um, does that make sense? Not really. So yes, we're, we're statewide. We definitely cross borders. Um, and our manufacturing center is a national center. So, um, but typically if you're in another state and there's an MBDA center there, 
if you contact me, I'll work with that center because if you're trying to get business in your state and things like that, they're going to know more about that that landscape than I will. So we all collaborate and work together. Great. And this this is a, a question to uh, each of the panelists, uh, and I, I think it's a really great question. Uh, the person asked, uh, "What advice would you give to your younger self? You know, from where you you're sitting today, if you were to look back." Uh, several years, Ken, you're smiling because I remember when you got started, I was yeah. back in the day, I, when I saw your name, I said, I know that guy. <laughs> uh, but what advice would you offer to your younger self uh, getting started in business? So I, I, I could go first and, and I'm going to be real short, <clears throat> but, um, you know, um, as Janelle and Barb know, and, and probably everyone sitting in, in, our, in, in, in your seats, we all enjoy what we do, right? Technician-wise, you know, uh, Barb, you love IT. Janelle, you know, you were a consultant and you said that you could, you know, you, you're making money for a company and you could do it yourself. And, and of course I enjoy recruiting. I, I, I tell you, I wish I could have told my younger self that, um, hey, before you go out and do this business thing, um, get a mentor that's in that space. Um, so that you're not um, having to flounder around certain things that, um, that may have taken so much time, uh, whether it be a month or two or a year or so, and you could have gotten that mentor to kind of help you out right away, <laughs> you know? And so I, I, I'm a big believer that mentors, um, you know, it, it's difficult to find them uh, without a doubt. But, but if you could find someone that trusts you and you trust them and they can give you the advice that they went through and that there's no, um, you know, you're not, they're not trying to get anything from you or not, you're not trying to really get anything from them, but a mentorship, that, that, would, be the, 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 that would be my recommendation or advice to anyone is to try to get a mentor that you can trust and that can help you out and navigate through a lot of this stuff that we, we, we typically try to, we, we trip up over um, in the beginning stages of, of a business. Sure. I really like that, um, Ken. Um, and, uh, what I would add to that is be clear on what your junior zone is, right? Just because you can do everything doesn't mean that you should do everything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and if I had to start over again, I have a friend who is a board certified ophthalmologist and um, she started an eyelash company and she went from zero to a million dollars in a year. And I just asked her, I was like, how did you do it? And she was like, I treated my business the same way I treat my doctor practice. When I come into the office, I don't do all the things. I don't check you in. I'm not, I'm not doing your stats. I'm not taking your blood pressure. I only focus on my key specialty and that's exactly how I run my business. So had I had it to do different, outsource all the things, even if you, you know, starting with two orders a week, you know, find some, a college student or, or a stay at home mom or something to do some of the minuscule things that you don't want to focus on so you can get those orders up quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I already said mine, Donna. Trust the team, delegate. You know, it's the same thing, uh, you know, and Ken had a great point with finding that mentor because I think that's what helped me to realize that I was definitely hogging, you know, doing way too much with someone to say, Barbara, you know, why are you doing this? And so that mentor was a great voice. But yeah, trust the team and delegate. That's what I would say to my younger self. And I'd like to add to that, um, from my perspective, um, since we coach so many clients or companies is, you know, uh, I think to Ken's point, find a mentor or a trusted, I'd say like a trusted advisor, someone, and you can um, pretty much get through those weeds fast and you're not um, bouncing around trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, please manage your expectations, um, manage your expectations of the services that you're, you're, you're receiving or seeking as well as um, yourself, you know, what, you know, just manage those expectations with, because a lot of the times we spend time bringing people back to reality and say, well, no, that's not really what they do. That's not really what, um, what you can get out of this particular resource or service. So just manage your expectations. 
Well, Donna, with, with that, uh, would you mind telling the audience how they can get in touch with you and, and avail themselves of your services? Yes, so I, I put my email in the chat at donna.ennis um, at innovate.gotech.edu. You can also go to our website, um, mbdabusinesscenter.org um, uh, slash Atlanta. And we have a, a information form on there as well. You can complete that form and we'll get in touch with you as well. Great. Well, mm -hmm. folks, I wanna thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, it's been very informative. I, I really appreciate that you uh, put yourself out there for everybody. and. Uh, just feel free to, if, if there's anything that we can do here at the Department of Economic Development to help in furtherance of your business, feel free to, to reach out to us as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.